Hello and welcome back everyone to the My Generation Podcast Sunday Night Edition and on today's show I'm going to be talking about what it was like to make the radio drama Once Said. That was released on the My Generation Podcast back on the 3rd of March 2020 and you can check that out on the page right now on, on the YouTube channel. So uh, I know the podcasts were available on you know SoundCloud, Spotify as well so if you're, if you're listening on there uh, please head over to our YouTube page, uh, the My Generation Podcast to uh, see and hear the full audio drama with also some photography there as well so today i just wanted to go through um as we've had people on the podcast before sort of talking about it from the acting perspective i wanted to talk to you today about what it was like uh from my perspective as the director of the project um just in a very casual loose open form conversation style so it was just so much fun to make this. Um, Once Said was a complete passion project uh, built from zero from by me, just created by a group of very passionate actors, filmmakers, producers, uh, and photographers and musicians that just wanted to get involved and make something special. Um, we made Once Said as a uh, basically an amalgamation of two films I enjoyed, um, High Life and Ad Astra. Uh, I have problems with both of those films um, and I wanted to sort of merge the two ideas together and create something of my own uh, and put a unique twist on it with the audio experience format um, and I'm very happy that I've come out with something that's original as well as still taking good inspiration from some good ideas. Um, I really enjoyed this uh, creating process because it was my first time working with a lot of actors. Uh, previously, it's sort of been one or two actors on a project. Uh, this process was actually um, uh, more. It was, uh, I think, seven, seven or eight actors in total and uh, across many sessions and um, sort of working and directing. It, it, was my, it was my first one since the Screen South project, which I've spoken about on the podcast before. Um, and working with those sort of diverse ranges of experiences within acting there were theater actors there were people with very little acting experience at all uh there are people who come from film um not so many that had worked directly in audio so uh, but what i think was really fun was that this was pure passion so it also meant we have room to experiment so if there were um, ideas we wanted to try out or things we wanted to just test to see if they'd work uh, we had the opportunity and avenue to give that a go and that was really fun so we did we, we experimented and um, I got to experiment with the soundscape quite a lot uh, I edited all of it in Avid Media Composer interestingly because the um, uh, the timeline feature is very similar to Pro Tools um, so I did once I'd actually edited all my sound um, away from Avid I actually timelined it all in there um, but sort of taking it back to the beginning of the process uh, the once said script I, I, I just believed I wasn't doing enough screenwriting or writing in general at the at the time i wrote it uh sort of um december time of 2019 uh i just i wasn't writing enough and i, I just finished watching um uh, ad astra and i was like i need to go out and write something that amalgamates these two movies that i've seen um and so i i got my next evening free and uh, I'm quite a night owl when it comes to writing. So usually, if I've um, if I've got uh, sort of the morning off the following day, I'll uh, make sure that I can sort of dedicate like seven p.m. till two a.m. and do nothing but write. And uh, well, that's what I do because it gets me into a flow state. Um, and I, I wrote all the scripts for Once Said in that sort of window of time, and then basically took it to actors, took it to people, fine tuned it very slowly um, over the period of a couple of weeks. Uh, until i had the script that i could deliver to actors um instead of so much of because um, with my university projects and sort of more professional work we've done casting days um radio can move sometimes a little bit faster um and so like with this project um i already knew most of the actors i was working with so i was happy without having a casting day we just put it all together and um i had an experiment basically uh so it was really fun to direct these actors that I know well um, and have a bit of time actually sort of before we even recorded any dialogue to do that sort of discussion based stuff that I would usually do at a casting day for our uh, university project um, uh, currently we're still in the process of making it some pre-recording this a, a bit in advance but it's already out at this point um, we have uh, we did a, a very extensive casting day for that 
and uh, got to ask a lot of questions to the actors, get them thinking about what the piece means. Um, with with this audio piece, we were sort of doing that before we were recording it. So I allowed a bigger window for the actors. So you know, an hour and fifteen minutes per actor, even though some of them only had a handful of lines, so that we could come in, discuss, make sure we got the right tempo four or five takes for almost every single line in the whole piece um, and making sure that the actor had a chance to play and try it different ways also do some impromptu stuff uh, there's there's uh, some impromptu lines that actually made it into the final piece some that were just helping the character get into the uh, into the role uh, one of the actors um, was really struggling to sort of get started so by the time they were two-thirds through their lines they were great but the first third felt a little bit weak so what we did is we sort of made up some lines that would happen before the scene started and had them speak into the scene so by the time the sort of woodenness of their speech is finished they are on their opening line and we we had that room to play and put impromptu stuff at the end and in the middle of speech uh, again some of that made it through to the final script and hopefully it's not too evident you know what bits were and weren't planned because hopefully it all comes across as very free-flowing but um uh, you know also regarding working with music and sound effects uh, the music was incredible rando who did the, the score for it did such an incredible job um i gave him a couple of soundtracks that inspired me i showed him the high life trailer and the ad astra soundtrack uh, there was a specific song sort of in the middle of the movie that uh, i really wanted him to expand on but um i got him to just write a sort of five minute piece uh, for the uh, music and then i just asked him to have lots of different beats and flows so that the song's constantly chopping and changing you can hear the song as well on the page um so that when i came to the edit i had a lot to play with and based on the emotional beats of it i could sort of chop and choose different parts of the song um and sound effects uh, my good friend joel tar he is a blacksmith he's a blacksmith um one of kent's only blacksmiths um and uh, he's a good friend of mine and i went down to his forge recorded loads of sound effects of him working uh, because i think this sort of rustic sound really suits this uh spaceship -y type environment i'm actually taking a extremely old medium and putting it into a sci-fi piece which was uh, really fun for me because it it completely subverted expectations the idea of hey this is a uh, you know this is a very modern future story but we're hearing very old time sounds that are very raw and harsh and jagged and you can feel that they've got a bit of an oldness to them which hopefully gives you the idea of the ship being sort of very the, the sort of spaceship very rattly and old and um i think i just feel like those sounds worked and they added a lot to the piece because it was sort of missing something because the actual uh sound effects came last which is a very unusual way of working um i had all the audio in uh, i had them all the music in i had all the water uh, I had basically all the sound effects in and there was something missing and then the the final piece of the puzzle was going to Joel um, and incredible to get involved please go and support Joel especially if you live in the area of Kent wonderful person uh, he does classes blacksmithing work I, I just I can't recommend him enough please uh, support Joel in any way shape or form that you can if you're able to um, but that that just added another dimension to it and again because we were in the uh, business of experimentation uh, i i gave myself the freedom to do that and to rip up the sound effects and chop and change them and bend them uh, in ways that made them sound like not what they were um and, and i got to try sound effects on lots of different machines as well so the piece is effectively an amalgamation of image you know the the waves and fire and blacksmithing there's a lot of actual quite natural sounds and the sound of just the human voice uh, mixed into this very sci-fi piece there's not that many supernatural sounds in the whole thing yet something about it feels supernatural uh, which was kind of the vibe i was trying to go for uh, with the piece um, and what was also nice was that process of directing actors to a to a point getting them to discover the performance for themselves rather than like um, just saying i want you to do this do this instead i would sort of prompt them with questions that would allow them to sort of come to their own conclusions of what the line means uh because that's what they do that's i'm um, i've got to put a lot of trust in actors and i did uh for this piece um and i'm sort of learning that as a director there's a uh, a lot of 
you know, once you've cast the right people, just trusting them to get to that performance themselves and only just helping them along that way. Um, it's, it's It's been nice to also write and direct this but uh and produce for for the first time i've sort of done all three of those roles uh whereas before i've sort of uh, done two of the three sometimes even just one of the three but um because this was quite small scale i felt i could do all that on my own and run that alongside my university work my freelance filmmaking work without it feel like it was burning me out because um in the sort of professional space it's been quite busy and i didn't want this to you know um become a project that i rushed which is why i set quite a far deadline on it um because we had you know all of the actual uh the actual audio drama itself was done in february it was all finished it was just like adding the photos that came later um and i didn't want to put on my any pressure on myself um sort of toward the end of february um by having a release date that was really close because it didn't need to be we could release it in our own time um and that took a lot of pressure off it. It meant I could just have fun with it. It was just a bit of fun. And I think that's quite important to have if you're a creator in any facet to have, uh, if you've got the sort of business side of what you do, if there's something you just want to try, get together a team of people that are also happy to try it. This was all done by a group of people that did not mind just doing something for fun. And because they knew that, it gave them the chance to try something new. A lot of them hadn't done anything in just audio before. And it gave the photographers a chance to take different types of photos they hadn't taken before. Um, and I'd recommend if, if you're a student and um, you want a way to sort of fast track your learning, then alongside one of your films, try making a, a short film or an audio piece that's just for fun and uh, see how that feels, especially when you start to put a team together. Because a lot of that team, I've been able to cast in my university films. I've been able to get them involved in other ways, behind the scenes, in front of the scenes and and it's it's all networking and i've done it all through just the medium of a passion project effectively and um, without this passion project i would not have had the chance to get these people back involved in projects because we wouldn't have been connected if it wasn't for once said it's actually springboarded some of uh 2020's biggest connection building for me uh and yet we still came out of it with a result that i'm very proud of which is interesting to me <laughs> that um it's had so many sort of spiraling ramifications that um, if you have the capacity to go out there and do it, I mean, the, the actual kit setup isn't too expensive, what I've got. Um, what once said was created using a Rode NT1A microphone. Um, shout out to it. It's the one we use for the podcast as well. Uh, I love this bit of kit. I have a, a couple of them at home now um, using powered all through the zoom h6 looking to get a mixed pre in the future and then just using a couple of microphone arms as well and uh, you can see all the photos of the behind the scenes on max underscore barrett dot official on instagram that's max underscore barrett dot official uh, to follow all my uh, sort of work that i do and if you're interested in seeing what it was like um actually being on the set because you know part of the beauty of recording this in audio is you can be sat in a studio like we are today i'm sat in the same studio i recorded one set in which is quite poetic in a way i guess and yeah you can feel like you're halfway across the world or in a sci-fi universe or traveling in a spaceship there's something quite magical about all that to me um that just made once said so much fun um so if you're a creator uh find your collaborators collaborate with your performing arts departments your music your photography because they are itching to make things just as much as you uh, at a good university trust me they are um, and you're only one email away from the head of department away from connecting to these people who will work with you on your projects and it's so valuable um, I'm studying film at university it's been one of the biggest things for me is this networking just interacting with other people that just want to make things so when I come out of this it's not the end of my filmmaking i'll go into i mean i'm in radio i'm in freelance filmmaking and when i want to just make something off my own back i know who to go to i've got a team of people a group of people that i can contact and go hey do you want to work on this and they work with me before uh, and they can recommend someone else if maybe they're not able to who's also trusted and you just build up such a trust and rapport with these people it's so valuable um if you're a student 
jump on that and if you're not a student it's still possible there are so many forums online i've been able to connect with actors over facebook forums uh, spotlight certified actors i'm talking um musicians in notice boards um facebook for me has become a massive hub for work connections interestingly i've uh, made a lot more well a lot of work connections through linkedin and facebook now those have been my two biggest and then instagram tends to be my place to share the work that i'm doing so um i'm using social media in a slightly different way i guess um because it's got some really powerful benefits i know social media is a, a topic i like to touch on on shows and think fiction work i make but there's um there's a certain powerfulness to it um and it, it can be used it can be good and bad and i'm trying to highlight and uh, utilize it in a great way to make all these fabulous industry connections and they're so itching to work on things it's unbelievable i didn't realize how many people were out there looking for work um and because you're you know if it's for a bit of fun it portfolio builds and then eventually you get to the point where you can seriously start to charge money for this and say hey i am so confident that i can do what i do now that i can charge for it and with once said i was looking at it like i have now confidently made this it's only up from here um and i've confidently made the screen south project and was very 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 proud of that um also just university films growing in confidence but also willing to try new things not getting overconfident though because you know you've got to be aware of all the changes that can happen on sets uh, and things will change in a heartbeat so the the photos for once said came in very late uh, compared to what was initially um I, I had expected and that was through no fault of anybody it's just we all had university um so even though i got all the audio side done quick i probably underestimated how long it would take to do the uh, photography so even i've learned from a numerous amount of uh, mistakes that i personally made within the audio drama and just being able to actually be aware of them analyze them go back to them there were some directing mistakes i made as well um but it is a finished thing that i'm very happy with i may revisit it as well because it's um an idea that i'm passionate about uh or at least curious about as well um and what what it means so yeah once said um really really excited and happy to have released that uh to the world uh please let me know in the comments what you think of it because uh I just love talking about it uh, as a thing to do. Uh, it's um, I plan to do more of these type of passion projects. Uh, you'll, you'll be hearing this sort of toward the tail end of summer, I imagine. Um, so I've probably been working on loads of stuff over summer anyway that go toward my future endeavors. But yeah, please do let me know in the comments. Thank you all tuning in for this uh, short speakeasy Sunday session of the My Generation podcast. Every Sunday I do an anecdote film review or just life story um and so if there's something you want to know from me that i should be discussing here on the sunday night show please do let me know in the comments and then on thursday editions of the show we have a uh, jam packed with guests we have uh sammy bacon who does film reviews we have harry monday who does film um or, or sammy does um, music reviews harry does the film reviews and we feature music from a local ken artist so uh thursday are jam-packed episodes with uh, loads of really cool stuff from loads of really cool contributors to the show every single week it's amazing that these people contribute every single week and we've got a guest lined up for thursday as well and then on these sunday ones it's just me and you talking about whatever have you done a passion project do you want to maybe talk about it on the my generation podcast leave it below you can also email me my emails in the description so if you wanted to actually come on and speak with it like we had with owen laws when he came on and spoke about hand dog films uh, we've had actors on the show before we've had uh, theater writers on the show before novel writers and we plan to line up the future with so much more and musicians so if you are an artist please get in touch because i want to feature you here on the my generation podcast whether it's one of your comments below or having you actually physically in the studio with me here at canterbury christchurch university who wonderfully uh, let me use the studio space to record these podcasts although i'm very very excited that i've got you know and have done since the beginning of the show been using all my own kit which has been massing and growing i'd love to speak to a sound designer on the show as well so if that's uh, your field get in touch because i don't get to speak to enough people who are into sound design because it's really fun and um that was probably the thing in one set i got the most play out of um and most enjoyment because i can mix and match things and match different takes with different parts and make it sound natural um that whole sound designing process was 
really unique to me uh, and now will inform my especially my third year of university films God, university is nearly over this is crazy how fast it's flown by um, and I'll be putting some of what's happening once said into that I know that obviously this will have come out by the time you're hearing this but uh, a, uh, a film I'm going to be working on tomorrow it's uh requires sort of a, a podcasty moment uh and we're going to be using some of my setup so it's already starting to help inform other film shoots i'm working on which is just so fun um please get in touch uh with the show in any way that you feel like you want to contribute uh contribute and uh we'll tune in with you on thursday where we'll have guests sammy's music harry's films and local kent artists on the show playing their songs Thank you all very much for listening to this Sunday episode of the My Generation podcast, and we'll speak with you on Thursday for the next show on the My Generation podcast.